Welcome back. A new campaign has been launched on Facebook calling on Egyptians and foreigners to visit Egypt. The campaign entitled uh, Let's Visit Egypt is aimed at reviving this vital sector, especially that the summer season has begun and the local tourism has been activated. There are also relentless efforts by, uh, exerted by the Ministry of Tourism and the Tourism Authority, as well as various institutions working in this sector. And joining us uh, to shed more light on the issue uh, is Mr. Uh, Tour guide Mr. Amr Osman. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. You're welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me and good morning. Let's start off by asking you, sir, let, tell us as much as you can about Let's Visit Egypt, that campaign that you started. Um, uh, honestly, I, I wasn't the one who started it, but a group of uh, excellent young people who did that. Uh, such campaign is quite needed at the time because we do need to promote more for Egypt. Uh, not because Egypt is not a well-known destination, but because we have to prepare ourselves for a good uh, second part of the season, hopefully from September and on. Mm -hmm. So every single effort in the field of uh, tourism to promote and market Egypt is quite appreciated. Is this, um, is this campaign aimed, as I, I heard through the grapevine, that it's aimed at promoting Egyptians to travel within the country, is internal tourism, if you will, is that true? Um, I do think so, it is true, and it is quite important to uh, promote Egypt even among the Egyptians, as um, unfortunately quite a lot of Egyptians do not know that much about uh, the various destinations and the various sites that could be visited and how beautiful it is. So uh, we really need to reintroduce Egypt uh, on a different level to the Egyptians themselves. Uh, we do need definitely to have a good infrastructure to serve the Egyptian clientele exactly like the foreign clientele. So mm -hmm. if the Egyptians would travel around Egypt, I think their own experiences will be quite a magnet to non-Egyptians to come and share with us the beauty of this country. Uh, Mr. Amr Osman, there is uh, some concern that uh, many Egyptians believe that uh, you as people working in the industry of tourism, you only resort to the Egyptians when you have uh, problems or when the industry is hardly hit. Um, unfortunately, uh, in the past maybe 25 years, the uh, Egyptian tourism industry did not have a proper structure to hold it in a perfect uh, manner. That is a problem because every time there is a crisis, and we did go through quite a lot of them, especially with the Gulf War and 9-11, uh, it was always like a very big surprise. We did not have a proper uh, scenario to what should have been done. And uh, I think that this time, it's the right time to rearrange the house from within uh, before we start asking for more tourism to come. Egypt, as a destination, we call it in the business a classical destination, meaning that every traveler around the world has to visit Egypt. So the idea of having clients coming into Egypt is an ipso facto. It's going to happen. All what we need to do is to prepare the house within in order to be ready to serve them up to the international standard, if not better. Mm -hmm. So it's really the good time now is to study our own internal problems and mistakes. Well, what areas do you think need to be worked on? I think we do have uh, major problems in, uh, let's say, the part that's concerning the uh, Nile cruise and the visiting of the ancient uh, Egyptian sites starting from Abydos all the way to Abu Simbel. Um, up to this moment, we've never had like a, a navigation system that would allow the ships to come into ports at certain proper times. Uh, every now, now, everybody travels, or all the ships travels at the same exact time. So the normal tourist is living in a bubble of crowd. The minute this bubble leaves Luxor, heads to Esna, everybody's heading together. Surprisingly that Egypt is the country that owns the Suez Canal, that means that the Egyptians are the only people in the world who knows how to navigate through the Nile or through narrow uh, navigational areas like the Suez Canal or the Nile. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a full system in order to allow the ships to come in at certain times and depart at other times in order to save the monuments. Now, these monuments are so old and so fragile that we can't afford to lose them. And we're going to lose them because of compiling thousands of people at the same time to visit. So all these, uh, the body heat that is generated inside the tombs of the Valley of the Kings leaves about 20 milligrams of water per tourist. 
So imagine thousands coming in at the same time. While if we can pace it along the day, the tourist would not be suffering from the crowds and the monuments itself will be handled in a better manner. Mm -hmm. So uh, organization, basically. It is, but it's a, it's a kind of practical organization that we need to start. Plus that uh, in the whole Western world and even the Eastern world, now there are standards for safety regarding pedestrians. How would they walk, the ground the condition? Mm -hmm. We do have uh, people who are incapable of uh, going through lots of physical activities, so they might use an aid like a wheelchair, the areas and has I to And I noticed that Egypt isn't very well equipped when it comes Unfortunately, to but we have to in order to attract the proper clientele. Uh, we cannot just assume that people are ready and willing to go through all these problems. Uh, why don't we make it easier so we would attract more clients? Uh, Mr. Amr Osman, the Minister of Tourism and Minister uh, Munir Fakhri Abdelnour, uh, they have been engaged in aggressive, ambitious campaigns to re-attract um, tourists to Egypt. How successful um, have been these efforts so far? I think these efforts have been quite successful. Uh, the point is uh, that we do need a perfect marketing plan uh, based on quite scientific parameters. And of course, uh, His Excellency the Minister is quite a person in the field of management, so I'm sure that he's going to carry it out. But on the other hand, uh, we did receive a very clear note from most of the companies that the minute Egypt will have uh, its own le legislative body as the parliament and the president, everybody's coming back, business will be back online. So uh, the revolution itself actually was a huge uh, campaign to market Egypt because Everybody around the world knew everything about Egypt and how beautiful the country is and how even more beautiful the people are. Mm -hmm. So everybody now wants to come. Even our own companies uh, around the world started asking, can we arrange a day at Tahrir Square to take the people around and show them how things happened? So these efforts are quite uh, excellent. Uh, we need more of that. We need to have deeper uh, campaigns of marketing. We need to go into schools, teach them about Egypt. We need to go into universities, into any kind of human congregation. And I'm quite definite that uh, tourism will come back the minute we will arrange everything uh, within the house first. We know that you've got 22 years of experience under your belt. Do you think there are still hidden treasures in Egypt that haven't been tapped into or haven't been given the necessary attention? Um, I would agree absolutely with you. Um, Egypt still has lots of great things still hidden under the ground. There are lots of studies now even discovering things through usage of satellites, very sophisticated satellites. There are areas that we haven't even given it uh, the proper attention. So uh, I do believe that we do need to restudy Egypt again and present everything in a perfect way. And I think that we are quite successful at the uh, eco-tourism but we do need to preserve our ecosystem in various parts of the country in order to attract more. But nowadays, uh, ecotourism, diving, safari, uh, observa bird observatory or observation, uh, it, all these are quite uh, an excellent thing. And we definitely need to uh, prepare everything for the attraction of more tourism. Mr. Amr Asman, many believe that it's not only about campaigns that will attract uh, tourists back to the country, but rather offers by hotels, by resorts. Uh, I mean, uh, um, tourists will need numbers. I would agree, with you. I would agree with you on this theory that tourism needs numbers, but we have to be more scientific and specific in classification of tourism. In Egypt, uh, mainly we have... Uh, educational or culture tourism, which is the area that is concerning the ancient monuments and all these uh, parts of the country that would be uh, uh, very important locations for this kind of tourism. But we do have tourism uh, for beaches. So for beaches and all these areas, yes, we do need to have very aggressive campaigns. The idea is not an offer. The, unfortunately, Egypt now is being sold so cheap that I think as an Egyptian it would be better to invite the tourists for free and at, at least this would be much appreciated and people would like it but it's not the idea of egypt's price it's egypt's readiness and preparation to serve and instead of fighting over the prices and driving it even to lesser figures we would be better off if we would increase the quality of service 
because simply all the hotels, when you build them, you build them based on research. That does not mean that next day you take them and sell them for free. As an infrastructure is going to deteriorate, there will be no funds for maintenance and the whole thing is not going to last more than a few years. On top of that, it will leave a very bad impression on international tourism that our quality is not uh, a high quality. So I think by increasing the quality, we can attract more than by lowering the prices. So you're definitely saying that lowering the price is not the way to go. And although I've, I've heard a lot of people share you, share this opinion with you, but then where, where is it that we're going wrong with the services? Why can't we lower, why can't we uh, aim, for example, with luxury tourism? Why is that still lacking? Unfortunately, uh, about maybe 15 years ago, uh, a, quite a, a wrong theory came into existence talking about uh, the supply and demand. Mm -hmm. And this is a good theory for business, but not in tourism, not with our ancient sites, for a very simple reason. If you have another country that has Valley of the Kings or Abu Simbel or the pyramids, okay, so let us compete with them. We don't have competition. We do need to increase our own quality increase the pricing because tourism has to leave a good social impact on the people so if we would keep on attracting very cheap uh, tourism this would not leave any good impact on the society as people do not have a high level of uh, expenditure they don't have even a high level of understanding of the importance of these magnificent sites well i heard that there's a problem with the rate of return why do you think that is and how can we avoid that from happening in the future in order to have a perfect uh, level of return you need to have an excellent quality that everybody will come back to what is tourism? Tourism is an activity you do when you are at your best or at your worst. You want to clear your mind. You want to relax. You want to enjoy. You cannot do all these things if the quality is so poor and people getting sick because of poor hygiene or people falling down on unpaved grounds. But if you would have a very high quality handling to the customer, the customer will definitely love the destination and would have very good friendship with even the staff that will attract him or her to come back. Mm -hmm. So we do need to leave a good impression. Somebody comes in, enjoys a magnificent tour or even uh, a stay by one of our beaches, loves the staff, loves the quality, and then he will or she will again come back uh, every single year. Okay, Mr. Amos, Man Veteran Tour Guide, thank you very much for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you very much. The uh, Mexican ambassador in Egypt